Shalom. Shalom. And greetings, brothers and sisters. We give praise to Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, Awa Alahayam, and Yachi, Mishiaka, King of Israel. We hope you all are enjoying this journey with us, enjoying all the edification that Ahaya is revealing. And today we'll be looking at who shall be saved in the end to understand what is coming in the end of the world and even after at the end of Yahweh's reign. I'm going to start in the book of 2nd Baruch chapter 54. We're going to read verse 1, please. 2nd Baruch chapter 54 verse 1. And I besought the mighty one and said, You alone, O Ahiah, know of aforetime the deep things of the world, and the things which befall in their times you bring about by your word. And against the works of the inhabitants of the earth do you hasten the beginnings of the times. And the ends of the seasons you alone know. The all-knowing Father created man to be immortal from the beginning. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. For Allah created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Ecclesiasticus chapter 15, verse 14 through 17. He himself made man from the beginning and left him in the hand of his counsel. If thou wilt to keep the commandments and to perform acceptable faithfulness, so you see, we were given free choice to choose if we would keep the commandments and perform acceptable faithfulness. Verse 16, He has set fire and water before thee. Stretch forth thy hand unto whither thou wilt. So man is given choice to choose fire or water. Verse 17, Before man is life and death, and whether him liketh shall be given him. So through scripture, we understand where our pleasure lies is the direction we would go to receive the rewards that come from that choice. The Lord has mercy on us and desires repentance. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 11 verse 23 to 26. But thou hast mercy upon all, for thou canst do all things, and winkest at the sins of men because they should amend. For thou lovest all the things that are, and abhorrest nothing which thou hast made. For never wouldst thou have made anything, if thou hadst hated it. And how could anything have endured if it had not been thy will, or been preserved if not called by thee? But thou sparest all, for they are thine, O Lord, thou love of souls. Hopefully this helps understand his mercy, even as we may make the wrong choices. He winks at our ignorance, hoping that we would amend and choose the living water and life in keeping his commandments and performing acceptable faithfulness. Let's continue in 2nd Baruch chapter 54 verse 4 and 5 and verse 11 through 14. Please. May you who reveal to those who fear you what is prepared for them, that henceforth they may be comforted. So there we see there's something prepared for those who fear him. These revelations of what is prepared comfort the hearts of the pure to know that our labor is not in vain. Continue reading, please. You show great acts to those who know not. You break up the enclosure of those who are ignorant and lighteth up what is dark and reveal what is hidden to the pure who in faith have submitted themselves to you and your law. So the pure choose to perform acceptable faithfulness, submitting to the law. Continue reading, please. For I will not be silent in praising the mighty one, and with the voice of praises I will recount his marvelous deeds. For who doeth like unto your marvelous deeds, O Elohim? Or who comprehends your deep thoughts of life? For with your counsel, you do govern all the creatures which your right hand has created. And you have established every fountain of light beside you. And the treasures of wisdom beneath your throne have you prepared. And justly do they perish who have not loved your law. Remember, the love of the law comes from the Holy Spirit shedding the love of Allah in our hearts so that his commandments are not grievous as we discuss in the lesson 
true Israel in spirit and truth. So if we don't love his law, we still have need for growth in the faith before it be a reason we perish, not being vessels wherein the Holy Spirit can dwell because we are subject to sin. Continue reading, please. And the torment of judgment shall await those who have not submitted themselves to your power. Those who have knowledge of his power show it by keeping his commandments. Ecclesiasticus 19 verse 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law, and the knowledge of his omnipotency. The pure will know these mysteries, and hope on the rewards of righteousness, unlike the unrighteous. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 22. As for the mysteries of Allah Hayyam, they knew them not. Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for blameless souls. Can you pick back up in Second Baruch chapter 54, verse 15 to 17, please? For though Adam first sinned and brought untimely death upon all, yet of those who were born from him, each one of them has prepared for his own soul torment to come. And there we see we actually can't blame Adam for why we are sinning today. The believer, on the other hand, confesses his own sin and the sin of his fathers, just as the book of Leviticus 26 speaks of, and submits himself in faith to the law and loves the law, being in subjection to the power of Allah Hayyam. Continue reading, please. And again, each one of them has chosen for himself glories to come. So everyone has a choice. Those that choose life by keeping the law. For assuredly, he who believeth will receive reward. And now that ties in to show what it means to believe. Because he who believes submits himself to the power of Allah Hayyam, being subject to his law, out of love for it, and faith in the Lord, hoping for the reward of righteousness. And you can reference that video, Are You a Believer? To see that believing actually is identified by keeping the commandments and bearing the fruits of the Spirit by believing in Yahweh. But now, as for you, you wicked that now are, turn you to destruction, because you shall speedily be visited, and that formerly you rejected the understanding of Eluyon. The understanding that an unbeliever rejected is to depart from evil. Job chapter 28 verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Let's continue back in Baruch chapter 54 verse 18, please. For his works have not taught you, nor has the skill of his creation, which is at all times persuaded you, Creation truly testifies as evidence of the power of Allah Hayyam, being seen in the things that are made, as Paul speaks of in Romans chapter 1 verse 21. Continue reading, please. Adam is therefore not the cause, save only of his own soul. But each of us has been the Adam of his own soul. So there we see, according to scriptures, no one can use Adam as excuse for why we sin today. Right. Because... Everything is before us to make a choice just as he had the opportunity. Every man has to appear before Christ himself and give account of his own deeds in the judgment. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 Wherefore we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Zachwa, can you read Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 please? Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Messiah, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Let's go to Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 104 and 105 to see that every man has to give account for himself. Verse 104. He answered and said, Since you have found favor in my sight, I will show you this also. The day of judgment is decisive and displays to all the seal of truth. Just as now a father does not send his son, or a son his father, or a master his servant, or a friend his dearest friend, to be ill, or sleep, or eat, or be healed in his place, so no one shall ever pray for another on that day. Neither shall any one lay a burden on another, 
for then shall all bear their own righteousness and unrighteousness. Can you read 2 Ezra chapter 7 verse 45 to 50 please? And I answered and said, O sovereign Ahia, I said then and I say now, blessed are those who are alive and keep your commandments. <laughs> well, you know what's really going on. It's like, man, blessed are those who keep your commandments. Right? But what of those for whom I prayed? For who among the living is there that has not sinned? Or who is there among mortals that has not transgressed your covenant? And now I see that the world to come will bring delight to few, but torments to many. For an evil heart hath grown up in us which has alienated us from Elohim and hath brought us into corruption in the ways of death and has shown us the paths of perdition and removed us far from life and that not merely for a few but for almost all who have been created. Verse 49 He answered me and said, Listen to me, Ezra, and I will instruct you and will admonish you once more. For this reason the Most High has made not one world, but two. So knowing few shall be saved, there is another world to come for the righteous. Now before the next world, in the end of this world, when Christ comes back, a remnant of Israel will be saved with the believing Gentiles. Romans chapter 9 verse 27 and 28 Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. So sadly, some of Israel shall reject the commandments. Second Ezra chapter 2 verse 33 through 37 I, Ezra, received the charge of the Lord upon Mount Oreb, that I shall go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught, and despised the commandment of the Lord. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand, that shall come in the end of the world. So the believing Gentiles will be there in glory with the true Israelites as the Lord's people. Verse 35 of Second Ezra chapter 2 Be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world, receive the joyfulness of your glory, I testify my Savior openly. Or receive the gift that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks unto him that hath led you to the heavenly kingdom. Also, there will be Gentiles who are spared as well for certain reasons to serve in Christ's kingdom. Second Baruch chapter 72 verse 2 to 6 After the signs have come, of which you were told before, when the nations become turbulent, and the time of my Messiah is come, he shall both summon all the nations, and some of them he shall spare, and some of them he shall slay. These things therefore shall come upon the nations which are to be spared by him. Every nation which knows not Israel and has not trodden down the seed of Jacob shall indeed be spared. And this because some out of every nation shall be subjected to thy people. But all those who have ruled over you or have known you shall be given up to the sword. After Christ's reign, then comes the judgment. Now, let's jump to chapter 51 of Baruch. We're going to look at what's coming after Yahweh's thousand year reigns. Second Baruch 51 and 1. And it shall come to pass, when that appointed day has gone by, that then shall the aspect of those who are condemned be afterwards changed, and the glory of those who are justified. For the aspect of those who now act wickedly, also as for the glory of those who have now been justified in my law. So there we see where is justification in the law. That's right. That's the same thing Paul was preaching. Romans chapter 2 verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before Allahim, 
but the doers of the law shall be justified. Let's continue back in Second Baruch chapter 51, verse 3, please. Also, as for the glory of those who have now been justified in my loss, who have had understanding in their life. Remember, understanding is to depart from evil. And who have planted in their heart the root of wisdom. Now, what is that root of wisdom that will be planted? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and the branches thereof are long life. The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. Now, let's see the reward of the fear of the Lord, and departing from evil in good understanding unto justification. Let's go back to the rest of Second Baruch chapter 51, verse 3, up to verse 10, please. Then their splendor shall be glorified in changes, and the form of their faces shall be turned into the light of their beauty, that they may be able to acquire and receive the world which does not die, which it then promised to them. So during the thousand year reign, we will still be flesh and blood. All right. But after the thousand year reign, those who have attained unto that hope in life in Yahweh shall be changed into angels to immortal beings. For over this, above all, shall those who come then lament that they rejected my law. Now you can also understand that that justification comes by keeping the commandments as well because there's literally punishment for those who rejected it. And stop their ears that they might not hear wisdom or receive understanding. Mm -hmm. When therefore they see those over whom they are now exalted, but who shall then be exalted and glorified more than they. They shall respectively be transformed, the latter into the splendor of angels, and the former shall yet more waste away in wonder at the visions and in the beholding of the forms. Mm. For they shall first behold and afterwards depart to be tormented. This is going to be a sad time. This is why we're encouraged to change now, so that we don't partake in these things, on the wrong end of these things, the torments. We want to partake in the blessings, the change to be immortal beings. But those who have been saved by their works, mm. and to whom the law has been now a hope, an understanding and expectation and wisdom a confidence. Mm. So there we see again, confirmation, keeping the law, there's hope, there's reward in keeping the law. Shall wonders appear in their time, for they shall behold the world which is now invisible to them, and they shall behold the time which is now hidden from them, and time shall no longer age them. Because <laughs> we're immortal. Right. No more precious blood. <laughs> the scripture said, Allah created man to be immortal in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 23. This time frame after Christ's reign is when it will be fulfilled. Continue reading, please. For in the heights of that world shall they dwell, and they shall be made like unto the angels, and be made equal to the stars, and they shall be changed into every form they desire, from beauty into loveliness, and from light into the splendor of glory. So now we understand that. Now continue to 52. Verse 3 to 7, please. Let lamentation be reserved for the beginning of that coming torment, and let tears be laid up for the advent of the destruction of that time. But even in the face of these things will I speak, and as for the righteous, what will they do now? Rejoice you in the suffering which you now suffer, for why do you look for the decline of your enemies? Make ready your soul for that which is reserved for you, and prepare your soul for the reward which is laid up for you. All right. Don't focus on what's going to happen to enemies. Focus on what's set before you. In making ready for the reward to come, let's get the admonitions of Paul for us in regards to being saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 13. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahche, and shalt believe in thine heart that Allahim hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's also get more admonitions on being saved. In Hermas, Mandate 9, Chapter 14, Verse 5 and 6. Listen, saith he, the name of the Son of Allah Hayyim is great and incomprehensible, and sustaineth the whole world. If then all creation is sustained by the Son of Allah Hayyim, what thinkest thou of those that are called by him, and bear the name of the Son of Allah Hayyim, and walk according to his commandments? Seest thou then what manner of men he sustaineth? Even those that bear his name with their whole heart, he himself then is become their foundation, and he sustaineth them gladly, because they are not ashamed to bear his name. So we see through scripture we also need his name to be saved. We also need more than just his name to be saved. Hermas Parable 9 chapter 13 verse 1 But the tower, say I, what is it? The tower, saith he, why, this is the church. Hermas vision 3 Chapter 3, verse 5. I asked her, Wherefore is the tower built upon waters, lady? I told thee so before, said she, and indeed thou dost inquire diligently. So by thy inquiry thou discoverest the truth. Hear then why the tower is built upon waters. It is because your life is saved and shall be saved by water. So by precept we have to be baptized. Let's also see what we need to be saved to enter the kingdom. Hermas Parable 9, chapter 13, verse 2, and chapter 15, verse 1 to 3. And these virgins, who are they? They, saith he, are holy spirits, and no man can otherwise be found in the kingdom of Allah Hayyam unless these shall clothe him with their garment. For if thou receive only the name, but receive not the garment from them, thou profitest nothing. For these virgins are powers of the Son of Allah Hayyam. If therefore thou bear the name, and bear not his power, thou shalt bear his name to none effect. So we see through scripture, not only do we have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, we also have to bear the name of the Son of Allah Hayyam and his powers, which are these holy virgins. These virgins that are required that we have their garments are, chapter 15, verse 1 to 3. Declare to me, sir, say I, the names of these virgins, and of the women that are clothed in the black garments. Here, saith he, the names of the more powerful virgins, those that are stationed at the corners. The first is faith, and the second continence, and the third power, and the fourth long suffering. But the others stationed between them have these names, simplicity, guilelessness, purity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, love. He that beareth these names and the name of the Son of Allah Hayyam shall be able to enter into the kingdom of Allah Hayyam. Here saith he likewise the names of the women that wear the black garments. Of these also four are more powerful than the rest. The first is unbelief, the second intemperance, the third disobedience, the fourth deceit, and their followers are called sadness, wickedness, wantonness, irascibility, falsehood, folly, slander, hatred. The servant of Allah Hayyam that beareth these names shall see the kingdom of Allah Hayyam, but shall not enter into it. Their brothers and sisters, we see these spirits can keep us from our salvation. Now we all have sinned and struggled with these evil women, leading us astray. Yet today, if we harden not our hearts, we still have an opportunity to overcome the temptations of the devil. Hermas Mandate 4, Chapter 3, Verse 6 and 7 But I say unto you, saith he, If after this great and holy calling any one being tempted of the devil shall commit sin, he hath only one opportunity of repentance. But 
if he sin often and repent, repentance is unprofitable for such a man, for he shall live with difficulty. I say unto him, I was quickened unto life again, when I heard these things from thee so precisely. For I know that, if I shall add no more to my sins, I shall be saved. Thou shalt be saved, saith he, thou and all, as many as shall do these things. So there we have understanding of what shall come and who shall be saved in the end. Is there anything else? I think that's pretty good. All right, brothers and sisters, we hope this was edifying. Ciao, Ciao.